Hey, it's Nat from Prendy for the Digital Signage Feed, and today we're going to turn a food photo like this into an actual animated promotion. And we're going to make it look like it was sort of filmed with a semi 3D scene and a few tricks along the way. Okay, let's check it out. Alright, so I've got the photo of the burger here I'm going to turn into an animation. If I select the pen tool, you can see that with the depth of field, it's the same amount of blur around this area, uh, the main burger, and sort of here. A little more back there and none on the front. To start off with, I'll cut out the first level of blur. If you haven't used the pen tool before, just Google that one and you'll be able to find some basic tutorials on this. This is a little advanced, so I'll just quickly move through some of it. We spend a long time doing this every day. You can press undo if you miss one or hold alt to drag the tangents around. The main thing is keeping it consistent, how close to the blurred edge you're getting, and we can shift it all together at the end. Now that that's done, I'll right click and make selection. Then I'll pick zero as the feather, as we'll be adding that in a second. Now hit select and select and mask. Pick the red overlay and bump up the opacity so we can increase the feather and push the edge in until it looks about right. Then you can just turn the opacity down and up and see if you've got it in a natural sort of way. I'll turn down the feather a little bit and I think we're good. Hit OK and press Command J on the layer and you've got your burger by itself. The next part is grabbing that little back bit. So quickly get it and do the same thing. Just cut it out with a pen, select a bit more of a feather. Once you get to the select and mask, Command J to make that layer. Now I'll cut the bits out that are in focus. I'm just doing this quick because I know it'll be on a black anyway. I'll just speed through this cutting out as it's a bit boring. And now that it's done, I'll right click and make selection. I'll put a background behind to check it. Now I'll just quickly hand blur the bits that go back into the other layer just to match the blur. Yep, that looks like a cutout burger. Crop it, save for web and make it a PNG. Before we start animating, we'll need some other images. I'll grab a royalty free image of the ground texture first. I'll search for texture stone on pexels.com. For this one, I'll have a link in the description. And I'll just Google bar next as I can just grab any photo. I'm going to blur it out so much. It's just a slight texture. It could be a photo of a city if you want. It doesn't really matter. When you've got those, just drag them into the project window and we'll create a composition. I'll create it at HD in 25 frames per second as I'm Australian. Then I'll add the burger image we cut out into it. Pre-comp that one and call it burger. Then I drag all the other items into a folder so it's clear what our main render comp is. I'll add the ground image we found, pre-comp it also. Call it ground and make it a 3D layer. I'll make a camera then, 50mm is fine, and I'll create a null, make that a 3D layer and link the camera to it, just so I can move it around more easily. Make the ground a 3D layer as well and rotate it down. Make the burger a 3D layer as well and see where they intersect. We'll make it as close as we can, then I'll add an adjustment layer. If you add a 2D layer like this between two 3D layers, it will mean that they won't intersect. And I just labelled that one spacer. Now I'll go into the ground comp. On that ground image, I'll scale it down and add an effect called Repertile. And what that does, is it'll actually tile the texture out so you can uh, keep flipping it out and just make it a bit larger. I'll click unfold on that one to get that effect. Now I'll send that layer back a bit in the main comp. In the ground layer as well, I'll add a black solid. I'll call it a vignette and add a circle mask. Then scale it around, make it subtract, and crank up the feathering. Then when we go back, we can see it sort of created a fake light. I'll turn it down a little so it's not complete black. Then I'll add another mask and have it go to complete black on the very end of this image. Now throw the background image in. Scale it up and place it somewhere interesting. Put a curves on that one from the effects and just darken it a little bit. On the camera, I'll actually turn on the depth of field, turn the blur level and the aperture up. They'll be the two that adjust the amount of blur on the camera settings. Now I'll make the background layer a 3D layer, send it right back and scale it up. I'm actually going to add more blur onto this layer now with a camera lens blur effect. Turn it up to around 
dirty, that looks all right. Also add a huge saturation layer and pull some of the saturation down just to take some color out, just to match the scene. And then the next thing is to go into the burger comp, increase the size of the comp a bit, then change the background settings to something light so I can see what I'm doing. Then I'll create a black solid, the comp size, and call it shadow. And just start drawing where the shadow will be. Don't go right on the edge evenly as the paper turns up from the ground in places. Now press M twice and just turn up the feathering a bit. I'll unlock the dimensions and turn up the X amount more than the Y to mimic the angle. Then I'll duplicate the burger, hit layer transform, flip vertical. Then I'll add the transform effect to it. And I'll bump up the skew on the layer just to match sort of how it looks. Then I'll duplicate the layer and rotate it to get a bit of the other edge. Pre-comp those two new layers and just cut out a little bit of them. And then do the same thing, hit M twice and feather it out. Now if I just turn the opacity right down to around 15, we can see what that sort of looks like. It just adds a bit of fake reflection to the ground. I'll put it up a bit so you can see the reflection on the ground a bit more. Already we have something that can be used, as you can see, just moving the camera around. I'll add a curves to the ground and bump the brightness down a bit, then shift the camera null up a bit and add some text. I'll type out Fritzenburger, as that's what this photo is of, the actual burger, and then change the font and scale it up a bit. I've got some description text I'll paste in here that I've already set up, and uh, that stuff's just Helvetica Oblique. I'll move that down to match, then I'm going to add a stroke between them, just to add another design element, so I'll just use the pen tool just to click those points out and select no fill and a white stroke. Link the other two layers to that title, the main text. Then what I'll do is I'll create a white circle. Start with a white solid at around 400 pixels wide and high. Make that into a comp called price circle. Inside that, just double click the circle mask to make a perfect circle. Then add a text layer and type out the price with the same font as the title. And just in black. I'll adjust the dollar sign a bit just to make it look a bit better and center everything. I might even scale both those layers down just a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a uh, rough and edges to the circle. And that will make it match a bit more to that font that I've selected. I'll rotate this one a little bit as that's how you add circles of text, then make it a 3D layer and push it a bit closer to us. Next I'll make the other text a 3D layer and I'll just push that behind the burger, then adjust and scale. And just adjust it and scale it. Now I'll just move the camera to where I want it to finish and set a keyframe to the end. Then push the camera out and put some rotation keyframes in. We'll try like say negative 1.5 to 1.5 on the Y and we'll see what that gets. Then it'll just spin around three degrees basically using that null. If you turn on two views, you'll be able to adjust the depth of field plane to where the burger is in focus also. Then just set a keyframe and then move to the next keyframe and set another one and just adjust where that sits so it's uh, always in focus. Now let's see where we're up to. That looks, uh, that looks cool. We'll uh, add some more movement now. We'll start rotate it up a bit and then when we get close, we'll be closer to the ground. So we'll just rotate it down on the X. We'll quickly animate the text now, nothing crazy, just to get that going. For the price tag, set some keyframes of the rotation and scale and just rotate it, scale it down to start with. Now hit F9 to make them easy ease frames and turn on motion blur. For the text, what we'll do is just add some keyframes on the position and the opacity. Drop them down and turn their opacity to zero. Make the final frames in easy ease with F9 when you select them. Drag them a bit forward so they animate after each other a bit as well. Just move the layers around. For the Fritzenberger text, what we might do is... Uh, Turn off the parenting so I can make it pop up vertically with the position. 
Now I'll create a solid after I've done that and I'm just gonna scale it and put it over that text. Make it a 3D layer so it stays there and on the title text, just select alpha matte. So it just appears in that box. Turn on motion blur on the text and then just speed them all up a little bit, I think. Uh, if there's multiple, you can just hold alt when you have all the keyframes selected and just drag any edge of the keyframes to speed it up evenly. Another good trick is to add a fractal noise effect to the background. Turn the complexity down when we add that effect, scale it right up. Now that we have some uneven shadows, just set it to multiply. And I'll just tweak the brightness and contrast a bit. Let me alt click the evolution on that noise and type in time multiplied by 100. That would just add 100 to the evolution every second. There's a little movement in the background now. Let's see what we have. One other trick I'll do is I'll go into the burger comp. I'll make that seven seconds just to match the main comp. And I'll go into the burger, make a new layer that's white and the comp size. And I'm going to create a fake depth map. So what I'll do is I'll mask out the closest areas and feather it out a bit. I'm just going to speed through this stuff as it's boring. I'm just going to create a few white layers and just feather it out and try and sort of recreate the closest bit in white. And I'll just turn the opacity down on the bits that are farther away just to make it look right. I'm going to add a black layer underneath now that we're done and we'll uh, have that fake depth map. Adjust it a bit now that we can see it on black. And then when it looks okay, just pre-comp all of those layers. Name that burger depth pass. Turn it off and on the burger, bring up the displacement map effect. Pick the burger depth pass we just created. Now, as you can see, if I turn it up a bit, it's rotating the burger in 3D. It's obviously gonna look crazy if you do it heaps, which is just a subtle effect. We're gonna rotate it a little bit to match the camera. I'll have a look at the camera move that we have and I'll just rotate it to match, make it two on the horizontal rotation. Then make the Y value negative. At the end, do the opposite of those values. Let's have a look. This is just a quick depth map too. If you bring it into Photoshop and you'll be able to paint the black and white really properly, you can get a clean effect. Okay, that's it. So in a pretty short time, you can see how to turn a photo into an animated promotion that can be used for your marketing or the end of a TV ad. You can see some other examples of how I've used this effect before. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other questions about digital signage content and make sure to like and subscribe to the digital signage feed by Prenti.